Today on an unforgettable episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. Did this patient care tech at a nursing facility witness death come over the doorstep to claim the soul of an ailing resident? On working late one evening in the mid-1990s, this patient care tech claims to have seen an entity enter the room of a patient, only to have the patient confirm that yes, indeed, a spirit had visited him, and he was about to pass to the other side. How could the man be so confident, and what can we do when death comes knocking on the doorstep of the ones we love? Those stories, and many more, today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. 855-853-4802. 4802 to share your real ghost stories with us. If you like the show, become an extra podcast person. That's a supporter of the program at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Five bucks a month gets you access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and uh, the whole archive. All of it there. Uh, the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories. Five bucks a month. It's all commercial free. Start binging away now at uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Okay, uh, it's Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program coming to you live from a dark and stormy night. It really is. And the storm is so big. I'm in Kansas, you're in Arkansas and it's covering both of us. I know. It it is a huge storm. Bringing us together. I know, I know. Um, I, I, I'm just looking out the window and I wasn't, I knew it was going to rain when I was out here, but all of a sudden it's like lightning bolts here and there. And, and I'm in this, the studio and it, it's basically a glorified train car. Uh, and it's like rocking as the, uh, the lightning strikes all over in these fields. I can feel the whole building vibrating. I was hoping power stays on while we're in here. As we, and we don't get struck. That will be another, uh, not oh, so that, great moment. Yeah. Because today I got in my car after lunch and I was pulling up something on my phone to listen to going back to work. And it literally felt like someone came up and pushed my car. Like, wind? Yeah, it was wind. Wow. It was a wind gust. Yeah. I was like, because I even stopped, like I looked around because it scared me. And it was a wind gust. It was There was no person. But it just felt like someone, someone like with two hands pushed my car. Did you go out and did you see two handprints on the side of your car? <laughs> Hell no, did I go looking Little for that children shit. handprints. There's actually eight handprints. Actually nine. That's the weird part because little Timmy also was there and he was helping, but little Timmy lost his left hand in a horrible <laughs> basket weaving accident in 1924 out on the basket weaving <laughs> factory farms of Wichita. It was a- and who are the other... Four sets, like his family. It was other random children from the neighborhood. Little Gabby Sue, she was the innocent one from down the road. Nobody knew much about her. She seemed to emerge from the bushes every day. Sometimes she looked at the wolves in the neighborhood and seemed to be able to communicate with them. <laughs> then there was Richard Moe. He was the <laughs> bastard child of the town, drunk. He, oh, poor kid. He would often emerge from dumpsters. Sometimes the kids would make fun and call him smelly and stinky. Little did they know, little Richard held a f- pocket full of daggers. That late at night, if you crossed little Richard, you wouldn't be crossing those tracks ever again. <laughs> in my head, I've seen the singer <laughs> Little Richard, so that's kind of weird. <laughs> Later on in life, this man would become a singing sensation. But scared the shit out of Tony when he was on those Taco Bell commercials, playing a piano and running down the freeway, screaming, run for the border. Yeah. (laughs) Did he do Taco Bell commercials? Yeah, they were creepy. He had like some sort of, I think, um, like colored contacts in on them. And his eyes were almost like fucking glowing. It was in the 80s, and it was just, I'm like, oh, my gosh, he's, like, kind of scary. (laughs) In the ads, he he looked crazy and scary, like, more than he normally did. And, yeah. 
I don't even remember that. Yep. Probably most people don't. It's one. It's like that that part of life where you remember every damn detail. And at least that's how I'm when I was a kid. And I know Harp's kind of the same way where it's like, there's just years where it's like, you just pay attention to this shit because that's what you pay attention to. <laughs> and you know, like all of it, you know? So I don't think I have a year like that. No, even like recently. No, I don't anymore. I mean, I, yeah. I tend to just remember things randomly. Yeah. I'm just trying to keep my head above water these days, but no, like back then I could like tell you like, and here's the current, you know, special campaign at McDonald's. You knew like what was in the Happy Meals. You knew what was there at Hardee's and McDonald's and everything. And you knew what the toy was and you knew, you know, just everything because you fucking lived on television and advertising. And, you know, that's how it was, you know, when I was a kid playing around with stuff, we had TV and then we played and TV was on when we played. So... <laughs> And, you know, I came from a poor, poor family and we'd see the things on television. And they'd be like, yeah, right. Get a job if you want that, Carol. <laughs> OK, mom. There Fine. was a, there was a lot of that where it was like, yeah, well, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right. In your in, in your dreams was one of my dad's favorite things to say in your dreams. That'll What's so crazy is that like I couldn't wait to get a job. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I wanted a job so bad. The second I could have one, I had one. I was working technically before I was legally able to work. And then they're like, OK, you're 14 now. You should probably legally go get that work permit. <laughs> so I did. Which is crazy that you're working at 14. Yeah. I mean, I the second I could, I would. And that's, yeah, I loved it. It kind of turned into something after a while. Now I'm back in a shack where it's lightning around me in my yard talking about ghosts. <laughs> He's a normal person, everybody. It all worked out at the end. <laughs> so, yeah, my neighbors, I think, are really wondering what the hell I have going on over here. Um, I just started working on uh, my garden for this year. And I'm going to do something called uh, straw bale gardening, where you can uh, grow stuff out of straw bales. Um, but it, to do this, you need a lot of straw bales. So I, I have my garden and I'm putting all these straw bales up in like interesting formations. It's kind of getting to be stonehenge ish. Uh, and <laughs> I think my neighbor's like, what the hell is he doing with these straw bales all over his garden? Like, is he like trying to like summon like aliens or something the way they're being arranged or what but it's going to look really cool in the end it I, will be really cool actually so i'm doing like levels jerry levels of um uh, of of the garden so it will be good hopefully or nothing will grow and it'll look crazy that i have all these straw bales all over my no, garden. no i think it'll work out i hope so i think but, you're gonna love it yeah it should be fun uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to our first story of the day. In 1990, I accepted a position as a patient care tech in a long-term care facility. I was pretty experienced by this time in my career and this particular assignment. Back in the day, most of the time, the male staff was limited to the male residents. This day, I was introduced to a quadriplegic, a new resident, Mr. J., we soon became pretty close, as you do sometimes in this field of care. And as we did, he became more comfortable with personal subjects and conversations. We often talked about our lives, hopes, dreams. I worked the 3 to 11 shift, and no matter what was planned or scheduled for that shift, it began with first stopping in to say hello. Working this shift for most was always kind of eerie and could be very creepy at times if you were not used to it. This night, I started my shift as usual. I looked down the wing where Mr. J was located I noticed he had a family member visiting as I saw a tall figure enter his room. So I stopped and turned around as not to disturb this quality time. Later that shift, when I made my rounds, I went to his room. I was met with a different resident than normally. Always cheerful Mr. J. The energy was very different and strange and I knew something was on. This on is a feeling that comes over me when spirits are present. It starts with a tingle. And a flush of emotions, sights, sounds. As I stood by this, besides, I saw a dark figure in the corner near the window. I just, it just looked at us. Although I couldn't see any details or features, I could clearly see the outline of a tall man 
a mass rather, a shape of about six feet. I'm what I would call a trained observer as I've had my share of encounters with the paranormal. I mention this because I noticed his interaction with this dark figure as he switched his gaze darting between both the figure and me. I could see he was saddened but not really scared. I assured him that I was there for him and he thanked me. What he said to me next caught me off guard to say the least. He first thanks me for our time together but continued telling me that he was passing on and would not be here when I got in the next day. Even though I was shocked, I somehow believed him because of what I had just witnessed. He could see I had so many questions before I could ask. He said, I can't tell you or talk about it. He told me that he was not afraid and I believed him. I stayed with him as long as I could and visited him throughout my shift. The following day, I called myself being smarter than the situation and came in two hours earlier, determined to be there. There if and when it was his time. When I passed the nursing station that led to the wing, I had met my staff member who gave me the news that he was already gone. My eyes swelled and it was hard holding back my emotions. I turned to leave the building, heading back the way I entered. I was immediately pulled back towards his empty room, which was being stripped as per procedure when someone had passed. As I was about to enter the room, things turned on once again. I felt that familiar tingle. Before I could recover and gather myself, I saw him. Sitting there on the side of his bed, his feet dangling, he was swinging them back and forth. His face had a huge smile and a look of wonderment. My eyes never left him as he slowly faded away. I think back and I realized he was happy that he was about to take his second, first step. Keep doing what you do. Joe. And now we cut to Carol, who may be crying at this time. <laughs> I'm not crying, but I just found that very touching in that, you know, and I think a lot of elderly people are very ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that they would be really happy about it. And I think that that's really cool how he saw him there after he was gone. Yeah. Like he did hang around, but also wasn't there. Mm hmm. But kind of was a little goodbye to, to him. Mm. And it wasn't the, the traditional, hi, I'm over here. You no, know, you just saw him in a moment of, of happiness yeah. and peace and, uh, you know, togetherness, uh, you know, for himself of, you know, having his feet there dangling again and just yeah. living in that moment and experience. You know what else I love about that is that he had a good relationship with him. So many people who end up in long-term care they're just by themselves you know and the staff is so busy and i get it but it's like make time for them you know and if you have a parent or a grandparent or a great grandparent somebody in a nursing home like go see them like there's just so many of them who never have visitors mm -hmm. nobody ever comes around and just the fact that they would have that close of a relationship that he would have come to say goodbye to him. That's pretty cool. It is. That's really cool. It is. And not scary. No. Not as scary. You know, it's just a, that he found peace again. Yeah. And if, uh, here's a little uh, a pro tip for everybody. If you want your, uh, your family to visit you when you do get to that place, uh, start making threats now. Um, you know, start... Uh, you know, talk to them about ghosts and hauntings and all the things that you know about, uh, you know, loved ones coming back uh, to the loved ones that didn't seem to care that much as they got older and explain exactly what you'll do if they don't visit you on a regular basis and join you for bi-daily bingo nights in the basement of the retirement home. And that um, anybody can be written out of a will at any time. Exactly. And you don't want the fucking orange. You don't want the dime. Grab the fucking Snickers if you win it, Bingo. For the oh, love God, of God, yes. I need another fucking dime or orange. What the? If I, if, if, if yeah, I would chuck that orange at whoever's head, you know, gave it to me. Like, no. And I don't, I don't want just a little Snickers. Give me a full size get, Snickers. Get the big one. I would be totally, I would be very, I'd be that guy. Like, you're sitting there playing and it's like your grandson, like, oh, Grandpa won. Okay. Go, go get Grandpa a prize. And he goes, like, no, not a dime. What is this? No, I want to. 
No, it's a half orange. Somebody licked that orange. What are you doing? You're a dumbass. No, get get me the big Kit Kat. The big, no, there's, but what's wrong with your son? That's how it would go. <laughs> I raised you better than that Harper. What the hell? <laughs> I tell you what, though, it- be so when much fun. I, if I ever have to go into some care home, I'm going to find me one that does happy hour because some of them do these. They days. do. Oh my God. Yeah. And you could go have a cocktail. And I'm like, I want to live there. Mm-hmm. I want to go have a cocktail with my friends. Oh, I think it's going to be real interesting uh, because you're going to have uh, <laughs> each generation, you know, has kind of like what they want. And it'll be so eventually with me, we're going to have like. Uh, nightclubs and stuff where it's going to be playing like 90s techno or something and I'll be like oh yeah here comes the Mimo Mimo card Mimo card Mimo card and taters and then we're just going to be like spinning like glow sticks and shit around it's going to be so much fun I can't wait it'll be so much fun and then one of the residents would have been a really badass DJ back in the day. Yeah. And he's still got some equipment. <clears throat> he's going to be spinning it. Yep. That would be fun. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> the moment you uh, you walk into the nursing home and, uh, you know, you, 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 what I think of is you know, like Sinatra music or something and things of that nature. But like the minute you walk into him now and all of a sudden you start hearing this, <laughs> it's like, it's time to go see grandma and grandpa. <laughs> They become rolling around the corner. <laughs> what about wheelchairs with hydraulic? That like, uh, oh that, yeah, yeah, you no know, hoopty wheelchairs. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's gonna be great. Going to be great, I tell you. Eight five five eight five three forty eight zero two is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to show your real ghost stories with us. Uh, next letter says first. I just want to say, love you guys. Love the show. Love hearing all these stories from other people. That have had paranormal experiences. I've been uh, wanting to write in for some time now. But an experience I had uh, several years ago. There have been several over the years. But this one I feel is significant. Because it essentially opened the door to the other experiences I've been respective to since. A little bit of background first. Like many. I feel like I'm an empath. I apparently always have been. But did not realize this gift until listening to your show. I've always had an uncanny ability to sense others just by the shift of how the air and energy feels. I can pick up on hidden emotions and just know intrinsically why someone's going through a hard time, which subsequently makes me an easy dumping ground for everyone's problems. Currently researching the topic and finding ways to hone my abilities so social situations and crowded areas aren't so draining, but I digress. It was the spring of many years ago. I was closing out my senior year of high school when suddenly and unexpectedly, my stepfather died of a heart attack. He was in excellent health and only in his mid-40s. So as you can imagine, it came as a bit of a shock to all of us. But it seemed to hit my mother and I the hardest, as I was the last to see him living. And my mother unfortunately found him just after he died. I don't remember much of that night. When we found out I remember bits and pieces, as I'm sure is true for anyone who's gone through a traumatic experience. We were visited by several relatives and friends that evening, but we were all in shock. Sometime around 9 or 10 at night was when everyone cleared out, and the three of us girls, my mom, my younger sister, and I, were faced with having to fall asleep on our own. I were lying on my stomach in my bed. At the time, I had a loft bed about five to six feet off the ground. It was April and perpetually warm in my room, so my ceiling fan was spinning lazily, trying to keep me cool. This detail will not seem random in a moment. I was lying there, continually on the verge of tears, gasping in those cry breaths as I dealt with what happened. Suddenly, I felt cool air on my back, like someone was blowing air across me. I felt the air traveling across my back. I insistently calmed and felt at peace. I was asleep within seconds, like I was going under some sort of fast-acting sedation. To say it was unusual would be an understatement. The ceiling fan does come into play here. The air that blew across me was too cold to have been from that fan. Not only that, but it was too forceful, and it was at an angle that could never have been achieved by a ceiling fan. 
almost as if someone was standing next to my bed. Remember, it's a loft bed of five to six feet up in the air, blowing air across me. The next morning, I told my mother and sister about the experience, and they each had one of their own to share. My sister fell asleep with her TV at regular volume. She said she remembered waking up in the middle of the night to see the TV on when suddenly it turned off. The remote had not been near me and she did not set up a sleep timer on the television. She said she had heard the distinct click of a button on the front of the TV, like someone had been in the room and turned it off for her. Last, there was my mom. She slept out on the couch that night and woke up wrapped in a blanket like she had been tucked in. She asked us girls if we had been up and put the blanket on her, but we had not. We pointed out that she could have half woken up and pulled it over herself. But she said the way in which she'd been tucked in would not have been impossible for her to do to herself or would have been impossible to do herself. The blanket had apparently been tucked securely around her arms and shoulders like someone else had done it. To this day, nearly 13 years later, we are convinced that those experiences were him saying the goodbyes to us three girls he was robbed of with his untimely death. Thanks for taking the time to read this long story and thanks for putting more stories like this out there in the world. So those of us that do have those experiences don't feel like we're imagining things. You guys are awesome. All right, thoughts on that one? Oh, of course that was him. Absolutely. Because, you know, I think, too, if you die suddenly, you know, uh, this is like nothing proven. I just think this. But I think if you die suddenly, that would be even harder because you didn't have a chance to tell people goodbye. So I think you would want it if you could get to them. Do the cool air, tuck her in, turn off the TV. Like, I think yeah. you want to give them some, some kind of sign. Yeah. Start making some Jiffy Pop. Exactly. Like, what is that? I think it's Jiffy Pop. And then you're like, people still make it? Yeah, somebody's making it in the kitchen right now. But what do we do? How do we do this? I can't read the instructions anymore because it kind of burned off the side. Oh, my God, there's fire. What do we do? We don't have a fire extinguisher. And then... <laughs> and fire's out. No. Nope. Who did that? No, the house fucking burned down and, every, and almost everyone died. Oh, okay. I was thinking <laughs> differently. No. I was going with a different story. No, it gets really bad sometimes. <laughs> you try to be the ghost that comes back to give a little sign because you love popcorn with your daughter and you inadvertently burn the house down with her asshole husband in it. <laughs> it's like, okay, so maybe I was trying to kill the asshole husband, but I got a little carried away. I don't realize my superpowers yet. But I just think those kind of stories, like, man, you know, we've talked about stories like that so many times because y'all know how much I love them. But, you know, I just think so often you're looking for that really big sign when it's just like it can be something as simple as just a breeze that how, like, where did that come from? Mm -hmm. You know, I just think those signs are really beautiful. And, you know, look for the small things, not the over the top. You know, it's not going to be written in the sky. See you later, Carol. You know, which would be awesome, but not going to happen. <laughs> what is the song? Wait. 748 said all the hits. Kiss FM, Patrick Swayze. She's like the wind. She's like the wind. <laughs> through my tree. Weather on the hits. <laughs> she rides the night. <laughs> Weather on the ace. What does it even mean? Do they still do that? I don't know. <laughs> there you go. She's like the wind. I just thought it was an appropriate song for the moment. Uh, Speaking eight, of dead people. Exactly. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Let's go to a caller. Hi. Yes. Um, I have a couple of ghost stories, but the one I have was when I was young, I was 17 years old. I lived uh, in the city and I'm Native American. My aunt took me back to the reservation. I drove my aunt's car. I took off with it after they had started drinking and I took off with the car and was going to go to the next big town because it, the reservation towns are real boring. So I got in the car, the old time station wagon, um, started driving and I heard something in the back of the station wagon and 
It sounded like somebody moaning like they were in pain and I could hear the windbreaker, like someone's coat, the windbreaker moving in the back seat. And I thought somebody had called in the car and was passed out and on the reservation. So I kept going and I, when I heard that, I stopped, I pulled over and I opened up the car door. I walked around the car Left, you know, left the car door open so I could see in because it was pitch black out there on the on the country road. So I started to get scared because I looked around the car, I walked around the car. There was nobody in the car, so I got back in this old station wagon. I guess I kept going, and all of a sudden I heard that moaning again, like oh, oh like somebody was in pain, and the the windbreaker, like they were trying to move. And this time I stepped on the brakes. I was gonna, I was gonna step on the brakes, but it started to. Uh, it was like something pulled at the wheel and started to pull me into the curb. And then I stepped on the brakes instead of going down into the ditch. There was no curb. I'm sorry, because we're out in the country. I I went down into, started to go down into the ditch, and. Um, it was pretty scary. I got out. I was shaking. I knew I had to go back because something was telling me not to keep going, not to keep going on. And, you know, we have a lot of spooky stories on our reservation. But anyway, I told my aunt about this story, and she told me that her, her car was haunted, that several people had seen somebody in the rearview mirror uh, a man sitting in the back seat. They could smell the smoke of a, you know, the smell of cigarette. Um, another story I have is my mother, who was uh, born in 1936, and she was a teenager. She was uh, living on the reservation in South Dakota. She had heard about this her cousin's story about how he had run out of gas, so he. You know, they were teenagers, so they were probably in the 40s, 50s. Had run out of gas, so he pulled up in the in this dirt road and waited for the morning time because the next light they could see, the nearest light he could see, was quite a ways away. So he waited and got it. You know, put his jacket over his. He covered himself up with his jacket, and all of a sudden he could hear, hear thunder like, you know, horses coming at him. It sounded like thunder, you know, but they were horses. He looked up and he could see these white horses. And on the white horses were, um, like, looked like the Grim Reaper. They had tapes on and they had holes where their eyes should be. And he got scared, so he covered himself back up and they rode around the car and they hit on top of this car, they kept banging on the car all night long until sunrise. It was almost starting to get daylight. He was so scared, he kept praying and he was scared. And they took off when the sun started to come up. And my mom told me that, you know, he had told everybody the story. And then he died two weeks later. I am now listening to your Real Ghost Stories Online, the podcast, Did a Child Talk to a Ghost? And I'm waiting to hear about the child. Um, I want to hear some of these. So I'm going to put this on my favorite podcast. But I have a lot of ghost stories. All right. Thank you for sharing that experience with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thoughts? Well, okay. Number one, I don't ever want to have a haunted car. Seems like you should be able to escape things like that in your car. But that's yeah. interesting. I'll have to tell my niece about that because she's the one who thought her car was haunted. Yeah. And that that car, I think, was haunted. There's been a lot of haunted car stories in the last, like, week. I don't know why. <laughs> Is that weird? Yeah. And then the other one was really weird with him and the horses coming up and surrounding the car all night. And then he died two weeks later. Like, that's interesting. Was that kind of, some kind of... But then the you horses know, like putting to, a curse on the car. Yeah, like I'd like to think that if you know, for some reason I see, like I think I'm going to die, 
I don't want it to terrify me all night long. It's like I don't want a just, bunch of horses like no. coming in like being like the omens of death. You know, if I'm going to die involving a horse, all I want to do is just relax. Look off into the meadow and eventually see the sun rise and not and, be scared to death. And then come running towards me as the sun rises and the grains of wildfire hay <laughs> hey. rustle in the wind. Wildfire comes running towards me and accidentally tramples me to death. The end. <laughs> so. That would suck. It really would. It's like, it's supposed to be this magical moment you get trampled to death by wildfire. <laughs> Dang it. You got you know, trampled though, by wildfire. That, you know, there's a lot of people who are doing the selfies like at the Grand Canyon or someplace yeah. and they fall. <laughs> so here you're in this really like, God, this is so cool. I want to get a selfie of me right here. And yeah. boom. Yeah. That's that. What what everyone should do, like they have like the signs up, you know, it's like stay, you know, X feet back, and then everybody just keeps ignoring it and goes up there anyhow. Instead of the fucking signs, we have the technology today. Just have like a, a video thing on loop and just make it the people's like videos and stuff of them falling off of the thing. It's like God. that'll make you think twice. It's like right there, somebody okay, shit. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna I don't think you're gonna be pushing that one. I mean, I feel bad for him because it's like you were you were trying to have a happy moment and yeah. like take a cool selfie. There's some of those places too where like if the body goes off, you don't get it back. Mm -mm. Like it's too risky for them to get down there and like, nope, they are down there. So yeah. Oh, that would be horrible. <sighs> I think that'd be yeah. I I I love um hiking and being out in nature and such but uh not a really big fan of going to like the edges of the cliffs and stuff and like i'm good i see pictures of some people take i'm like no i'm good <laughs> just no. oh my god no i suffer from extreme vertigo and yes. like i can't get anywhere close to the edge no talking about getting dizzy yeah that's Anyway, I don't even like driving around like your part of the country. There's some windy ass roads. I can handle this. I, I get more. Um, I uh, can't even handle that. Like Colorado is is much worse than this. Oh, much worse. And I hate that even more. Yeah, that I that I'm not a, a big fan of in a lot of cases. But anyway, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up at uh, ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Get access to all the bonus episodes, advanced episodes, and more. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Until next time, for Carol, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.